Hi guys, how's it going? It is me, Jack here, and welcome to episode number one of a brand new series here on Football Manager 2020 in the first video on my YouTube channel. Welcome to what is, as you can see on the screen, a Burnley FM20 save. Um, it's something that I've wanted to sort of done for, for a while, a Football Manager save, and I never really knew what team to do. Um, so what I've decided to do is to take a team that is, you know, probably regarded as one of the worst off teams in the in the championship sorry in the championship in the premier league and uh, just try and take them as far as we can if we get sacked we get sacked but uh, no one really seems on youtube to be doing a burnley football manager save because i think it is quite difficult with the the amount of sort of older players that you've got available at your disposal the lack of young players and um sort of a defensive minded approach from uh, Sean Dyche the football manager it makes for quite a difficult save so I thought Do you know what let's just let's just see how we go you know it's my first ever one if we get sacked then you know we might take another one or we'll start something different but um I support Middlesbrough um in real life and I thought I don't really want to do them maybe on this game I might do that on the next game so I thought let's just do a Burnley save why not there's no real sort of aim with this with this series it's just let's take them as high as possible let's try and transition them from a team playing negative football we might have to sort of play that in the first season to try and survive but we'll try and tweak with the philosophy a little bit and try and get them up towards the top of the table by playing not you know sexy football as Arteta would call it but uh, a better style of play than what they're playing now so as you can see by this tabloid here breaking news we have uh, penned a two-year deal replacing manager Sean Dyche. I'm apparently 40 years of age. I'm not I'm about half that minus one. Um, a lack of reputation of a survival specialist given the club's current ambitions. So it appears then that we're going to have to try and keep Burnley up in the first season. And as you can see, their media prediction is 16th. Last season they were 15th, of course they finished as high as 7th, I think it was the season before under Dyche and they were in the Europa League last season. So I suppose our aim is to try and get Burnley maybe continuously in the uh, in Europe, which would be uh, fantastic. But um, yeah, as you can see, they uh, they won, uh, it's the championship it was in 2016 and uh, Middlesbrough were runners up that season and uh, Hull won the playoffs and it's quite interesting to see where them two teams are now in comparison to Burnley um, they won the league one title back in 82 but apart from that there's nothing really anything else to show that was many moons ago <laughs> so was that victory there as well won the community shield back in 73 and 60 league two in 1992 and that's trophy there as well so let's continue on then we do have an assistant manager however not the director of football and I do like to quite utilize that position so we might have to look for a director of football at the club and there we go this is what i'm interested in the the uh the best 11 uh they have put forward to us is a 4-4-2 <sighs> i don't want to play this but it might be the case that we have to use this sort of formation to uh to get this club surviving in the premier league but as you can see it's uh there is a decent, there's a few decent players there that we can attempt to build a squad round. I think James Tarkovsky at 26, he's wanted actually at this moment in time. I think he's a, an experienced centre back, partnered there with Ben Ming. And then Dwight McNeil is a player that I'm really interested in. Is he? Yeah, he's actually really good. He's got five star potential there. Current, I believe, three and a half star. He could be one definitely for the future that we look to try and build the club around for the long term. In the middle there, you've got Jeff Hendrick, who's experienced, but is is of decent quality. And a partnership up top of Jay Rodriguez and Chris Wood. Wood is probably going to be our main man, I think, up front for us this season in the striker position. Decent finisher of the ball, so we'll have to try and utilise him. And as you can see by our loan obligations here, we have plenty of players out on loan trying to get some first team experience. In terms of club vision then, as you can see, it is very negative style of play indeed. The club culture is for us to play defensively solid football and play direct football. I mean, I've never, never, ever done that before on Football Manager. I've always tried to play nice, a nice style of play. This is going to be, this is, this is preferred as well. So it's quite, it's high up there in terms of importance. So 
we're going to have to see how it goes. And I think this is why this is such a difficult save and not many people on YouTube have attempted to do it because it's just so difficult to try and hit the ethos of, uh, of Burnley Football Club here. We've got to sign players under the age of 22, which I think we could do, um, and then develop players using the club's youth system. Uh, Five-year plan, though, we've got to just work within the wage budget. That's absolutely fine. We should be able to do that, no problem. And then the end of this season... The club wants us to fight bravely against relegation. That is highly important there from the club. So that means we might go down and I might keep my job. But I believe that we should be keeping this club in uh, the Premier League this season without a doubt. We've got to uh, reach the fifth round of the FA Cup and the fourth round in the Carabao Cup. And from then on, our contract expires at the end of next season. So it'll be quite nice to assess ourselves where we are. Uh, this time, well, two seasons time, um, and then with that, we've just got to remain in the Premier League. So this should be absolutely fine indeed. I think that with this club, hopefully, we should be able to keep in the Premier League, and uh, you never know, maybe make them a force to be reckoned with. But I'm actually really looking forward to this season. I think it's going to be tough. There's going to be a number of defeats in there, but who knows what we can do with Burnley. It's going to be exciting and I hope you're looking forward to it. If you are, make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep notified. Also hit that bell as well that you can um, hit that all send notification through to your phone that will notify you every time I upload. Like the video as well if you're enjoying it thus far and comment any suggestions regarding potential transfers or even just my style of commentary in itself. So. I've taken charge at Burnley. We've already gone through that. Tactics, I'm not going to do any of these inductions. You know, we're in February now, nearly March time. I know how to play a football manager in terms of induction, so I won't be taking any of that. Club vision, I might as well nego attempt to negotiate this, but I just don't think they're going to get allow me to get rid of this. I'm going to, I might keep direct football. Well, actually, let's, let's, let's get rid of both of them, because I don't want to do either of them, to be honest with you. No. I didn't think they were going to allow me to do that. Let's get rid of defensively solid. Or maybe, hmm, maybe I should get rid of direct football because I think keep clean sheets, that that will occur. Philosophy under which is expected that the team should have got a, a good clean sheet, low, right, okay. That, hmm, might be difficult. It's close to being acceptable enough. For, uh, let's get rid of that again then. Okay. I've got to, I've, I don't have to do direct football but I can keep hold of defensively solid football which means we've got to keep a good clean sheet record low goals conceded to games and shots faced to games okay I, that might be quite difficult though but I like the fact that we got rid of one of them hopefully next season if we're able to keep the club up we might be able to negotiate where to get rid of that one we don't know so we have to keep that there for now and I don't mind remaining in the Premier League for the next five years that should be fine hopefully we can build upon that Attempt to avoid relegation. I don't want to try and reach quarterfinals. I'm quite liking this budget though. Fifteen million pounds is not what I was expecting, so that is good. Um, don't judge me. Don't judge me on the Carabao Cup. We'll finish that. So that is what we've got to do. Let's continue on then. We've got a number of friendlies here that I might sort of rearrange and get some more in there, particularly in between these sort of bits here. We might be able to squeeze another friendly in. So we'll continue on from that. Transfer window is of course open. I haven't disabled the window at all. So as you can see, Eden Hazard there as the top transfer. But what I have got in is the winter update. I've been waiting for the winter update to come out, which means all of the um, signings from the teams during the winter transfer window have been completed. So good news for us. And uh, we'll just ignore that email for now then. I think in this first episode, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the staff, take a look at maybe building a tactic, and take a look at finances as well. Of course, we have just briefly touched on finances, though. We have £15 million available in the transfer budget, with around about £50,000 available on the wages. So that's, that's quite good for a starting budget. Overall balance is very healthy as well at £33 million nearly. Uh, are we projected to make money mm, I suppose to sort of sit around 30 million mark which is not too bad transfer budget will get bigger as a result though which is excellent so yeah 
I don't know whether we'll touch this £15 million or not. We might end up, but um, it's nice to know that it's there. We'll have a little look as well at the development centre, see if there's any players coming through the ranks that we might want to take a look at. In terms of under-18s, there's uh, not many players here. We've got Joe McGlynn. As a young striker there, 16, the ability to maybe get up to three and a half. So, decent finisher of the ball. So, potentially might be able to work a, work him in the lineup. Nobody else, though, really. And in terms of your under-23s, Bailey Peacock-Farrell is sat here. And I think as a third-choice goalkeeper to the ones that I'm thinking of in my head, um, I might end up calling him up, actually, to the senior squad, just seeing how he, uh, what we could do with him. And then in terms of potential as well, not really much. We've got three players there, two out on loan, and Henry Ogunbi that might make it. Good crosser of the ball at 13 now, I like that. Good acceleration as well, maybe one to look at for the future. And then we've got two players, Benson and Phillips, out there as well. Joel M Mumbongo, two stars already. He is on the loan list, so let's try and uh, maybe get something. Something for him. I don't think he's going to make it in our first team. So he's 20 now. Let's see if we can get him out on loan. Get rid of that £2,000 on the wages. As you can see, there's contract expires in two seasons' time as well. So that's not too bad. I'm liking his physical, though. Uh, before we make the tactic, let's have a look at staff because I think staff is highly important when you're playing football manager. You've got to have a good a good coaching team, recruitment team, medical team around you to help support you in trying to create success at a club. And as you can see already there by the, the ratings, it's not looking too good. It's not looking too good at all. We've, uh, we're missing three coaches here. Our best sort of coaches are the ones, the goalkeeping ones. However, elsewhere, it's pretty poor. Same there with the, the recruitment team. As I say, no director of football, which might be something we have a little look at. Apart from that, though, every other position is really sort of, it's it's worked towards. We've just got that many scouts, but they're, they're not really of any ability, which is a little bit disappointing. And same again here in the medical team. There's actually nobody really missing apart from maybe a sports scientist. However, we are sitting very close to the bottom there. So if we've got many uh, staff contracts running out. We may have to have a little look to see if we can uh, get rid of them by the end of the season and uh, bring in some uh, some people. But I'm definitely going to bring a director of football, I think. And I might bring in a coach or two. Might work towards getting another sports scientist in there. But apart from that, we really cannot do anything much with this at all. My assistant manager here, who I think is a big part of how you try and work with a team, Ian Warren, of course, has been with uh, Sean Dice for many, many years now. I wonder if we can get him on a pro license. Let's uh, ask the board. Yes, we can. That's fantastic. So he will be working towards his Continental Pro license, which is the highest accolade. Actually, I forgot to tell you, I'm running the same Continental Pro license with a professional football national level. That's what was recommended for this level at Burnley. And I think it's about three away from the top. So decent reputation. But, um, yeah, that's fantastic. I don't know whether I should look to give people like Jonathan Pepper here a, a coaching course. You know what? He's actually, he's not that bad. Let's uh, see if he would like to. Yeah, the board will be happy to give him one. Anyone else lacking in a in licenses? Not really. We'll work with them too then for now. They're going to work towards that, which is absolutely fantastic. Um. Actually, let's have a look at clauses quickly. We have got a clause available to us. Andre Gray, I'll be due 500,000 after another eight. So that's that's nice to know. Another million pound could be coming if Andre Gray has a successful season. However, this one here, Burnley will be due 500 grand after another 30, 28 league goals. Will he get that though? That's the question. We can cash out for 400 grand. Let's sell it. Why not? I'll take 400 grand any day of the week. So. 389 rather but um so that's gone we'll achieve another million pounds if andre gray can have a successful season this season anything else we need to look at there derrick will we get 15 percent of course tom heaton left in the summer in the winter rather was it summer or the winter no it was the summer wasn't it he left he's gone to to villa um and we get a million pound if they avoid relegation and then from there 
we get nearly two million every season for the next four seasons. Michael Keane is an interesting one. If Everton reach the group stage of the Champions League, we get two million. Fifteen percent of what they sell Michael Keane for goes towards, which is great business. Many clauses here for Sam Vokes, and I think he might do well for Stoke this season. So that should be good for us. Naki Wells, we get a million pounds every season, which is excellent. If Chris Wood bangs in the gold, we've got to pay out for that, though. And there's other things in here as well for for many of our players. Jerry Rodriguez, Rodriguez or the other two installments. Oh, that's not nice. Five million pounds for Jerry Rodriguez. Mm. Right. Let's let's build a tactic. Let let's build a tactic. Actually, I keep putting off building this tactic. Dynamics. Dressing room atmosphere is very good. Um, manager support is average. However, team cohesion is average at best. Let's have a let's have a little talk to uh, to the boys. Twenty five players in attendance. I wanted to take this opportunity to welcome myself as the Burnley manager, and I think I'm very positive about our chance, and I think we could beat the drop. Great. Don't I hate going into a football club and this happens where there's a divide. Staying up is going to. Do you really think? Maybe we should be, avoid the drop. Okay. I'll passionately be very happy about that. We've got to try and beat the drop. We've just got to survive this first season. Then we can build on from there and try and make this squad uh, an exciting one to watch. Okay, okay. So, tactical style um, is what we've got to choose from here. I don't really tend to, to make my own style. I like to pick one and work from there and tweak with it a little bit. Uh, and cater it for my players' needs. I really don't want to click Route One. My my assistant manager believes Route One is the way to go. I just don't think it is. I really don't. However, this first season, I think we've got to go something where we just get balls into the box. It is going to look a little bit direct, but I think it's just got to happen. I think it has got to happen, and I think control possession is what I'd like to probably go with. But I'm I'm looking at wing play, and I'm thinking that's going to be the best one. I don't want to play on the counter-attack, so obviously we can't play a sort of tiki tacker. Let's do that. I'm going to go wing play, and I'm going to use I don't want to go 4-4-2. I really don't want to go 4-4-2. I'm going to see if we could maybe use this formation or maybe do we have do we have any cams at this club that could maybe no, you can't you can't run with a cam. You, you, I think we do that. We run with a CDM, two centre mids, your wingers, and then your striker. I think that's going to be the best bet for this club. Um, we play balanced, and we just yeah, we just try and get the ball in the box. That's what we've got to do. I'm going to change a few of these rules though, because I'm not really a fan. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go through position by position, and we'll just see what we've got in each position and maybe where we need to strengthen. Um, I'm going to keep these wing backs on support, I think. Uh, two central defenders, I think, will be key. And then we go deep lying playmaking on support there with a box to box. And I quite like using Mazala. Maybe if we use a Mazala on support just, just to allow us to sort of open the gaps a little bit, that could work. Um, and then I think we go two wingers here. Maybe, maybe we have one attacking. Try to think who who's on the right hand side. Actually, McNeil would be on the left, wouldn't he? Yeah, let's do that. Let's have McNeil going on attack, just just to open the spaces a little bit. I know I didn't I didn't want to be doing this, but yeah, we have two wingers and then oh, do you go target man? I know it's gonna. This is this is exactly what he's gonna be. Whoever this is, which I think will be Wood. See, that's his, that's his favorite position. It's a target man. Maybe you could have him in a press of... No. No. Deep lying. Nah. Target man. Dribble less. Hold up the ball. Oh, I don't know what to do. It's hard. It's really hard. I, I want to go pressing forward, but... Maybe we go deep lying forward. Link the attack to the midfield. Let's try that. Let's try it and see how it goes. This is going to be difficult. I'm, I'm excited to how difficult this will be with Burnley. Um... We play extremely wide on the flanks. Try and allow our wing backs to overlap. I don't really want to focus. I've got to focus a player, haven't we, on the wings. Uh, try and get the ball into the box. I don't really want to hit early crosses, so we'll work it into the box. Play for set pieces, I think, is actually going to be one we've got to put on. Higher mm, standard passing. 
Uh, run at defense. Um, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Uh, do you click? Be more disciplined. No, I'm not gonna click one for there. Uh, in transition, I want us to counter. Distribute the ball quickly to the flank. Mm, yeah, to the flanks. Or do you make it? Actually, well, I'm going to click off that. Do you distribute the ball to the centre backs and allow them to distribute to the wing? Yeah, let's let's try it by taking short kicks and then out of possession. Yeah, we've got to play with a sort of a lower sort of style of attack there with your standard defensive line. Keep that standard. I don't want to go get stuck in. We'll play more urgently. I like that. I like that. I think that is going to be okay as a first tactic. So now, let's have a look then, position by position, and we'll see exactly what we, maybe where we need to strengthen. I think striker, we have a plethora of strikers at this club. Maybe even too many strikers, because you've got Chris Wood, who I'm going to try and use. You've got Rodriguez, and you've got this man, Ashley Barnes. And I think that is three strikers is should be enough for this first season. However, I'm looking at Matej Vidra here. I'm thinking... Fifteen million pounds. I don't think I'd get anywhere near that for him. Do you try and transfer list him? See if we can get anything for him. Let me just uh, just go back quickly. I'll discard that. Chris Wood, Ashley Barnes as a as a striker, and then you've got Jay Rodriguez. All twenty nine. Vidra is the younger one out of the three of them, or four of them rather. Yeah, I'm going to transfer list. Vidra, I mean, he could play the pressing forward role, but I am gonna, I'm gonna get rid of him. If you could end up getting ten million pounds for Matej Vidra, I take that. I think. So we'll use them three, and I think striker position should be okay for now. On the left, we do have Jay Rodriguez that we can use, and then we also have to him, we've got Robbie Brady, who would probably be better suited to that position. He's more of a yeah, a wing back sort of mid, a left mid rather than a left winger, which is what I want to implement. I think we've got to maybe make a backup tactic to this, which would be a 4-4-2, just a bog standard 4-4-2. Might even have to be a Route 1 style. I think we've got to make that as well. But Brady, he's got good crossing. I like that. He can play the wing back role on support. I'm going to try and get him to uh, maybe just play on by attacking. But he's won there. I think McNeil and Brady. How old is Brady now? 24, is it? Oh, 27, goodness me. He should be all right. I think them two on left wing is fine. On the right wing, we've got Goodmanson and we've got Aaron Lennon as backup to him. To be fair to Aaron Lennon, he's still got some decent stats available to him. Again, is he more of a right midfielder? Yes, he's more right midfielder, but he can do a job, a good job on that right wing. So I think for this first season, his contract ends at the end of the season. He should be all right, but I'd rather play... Goodmanson on the right. He likes to be an inside, an inverted winger or an inside forward. So I'd rather play McNeil there, have that creativity. And I like the fact, however, with Goodmanson that he can play preferred foot on the left. I think we have to play wingers and just get balls into the box. Crossing of 14. Let's get him training a uh, winger on support. I want to see how we can do. If not, of course, as I say, we have... Aaron Lennon there, so that should be okay. Attack I'm happy with, I'm content with the attack. Let's move on to the midfield and see what we've got to work with here. Mazala, hmm. nobody that can do that. Box to box, however, we have good players that we can use. Who do you pick there, though? That is the question, actually. CDMs as well. Hmm. I think we go Cork. Jack Cork is probably your best bet as a defensive midfielder. I can remember at Swansea uh, doing this role rather well. He does like to uh, to do the, def the deep line playmaker role on defend. Do you know what then? Let's let him do it on defend rather than support. He's going to sit in here. I think Cork, with back up to him, we've got Westwood. He should be all right in that position. And then your box-to-box -box role. We can still use Westwood and probably even Cork. I don't know who to go with here though. Do you use Brownhill as a younger alternative to Hendrick? I mean, Brownhill would be fine. And for now, we could go Brownhill there. And Jeff Hendrick could try and learn the Mazala role. Mazalas need to sort of dribble with the ball a little bit better. What? A Mazala? Um, 
you know, further forward on from position, move into the channels. Less defensive responsibility, likes to drift ride and operate in the half spaces. With a support group, Mazzola will balance his responsibility with traditional midfield inclination. Right. I think we roll with that for now. However, I'm contemplating bringing in a Mazzala at that centre mid position, like a well, like a true Mazzala, because then you can put Hendrick in there, still have Westwood as a backup, and then have either of these two as backup there. So Mazzala, a decent Mazzala, is one to potentially bring in, I think, at that centre mid. And even just in general, because you've got to think, we've only got really got four centre mids and we've got three positions there. Rotation is key in the Premier League. So if we have another centre mid in the... It, there to work with will just help us out that little bit better so got them two got cork and westwood for for now i'm going to bring in another name at center mid to help us out but for now i'm not i'm not really one to sell players in the first season in the first window rather um so it's surprising to see me go out there and sell vidra but i don't think you need four strikers you really really don't um and especially if I'm only going to go one up top. And even if I do decide to go two up top, we have still got backup there that we can use. And to be fair, if I was going to do it, I think Barnes would be my backup. I'd have Rodriguez and Wood up top. Um, and hopefully, you know, if we, even if we get five million for Vidra, I'd still be happy with that. Because I don't th I don't really rate Vidra that much, to be honest with you. In the Championship, yes. But Premier League, I don't think he's this level. So we'll get rid of him. And let's move on to the defence then to uh, round off this team. Uh, we'll go goalkeeper first. We'll start from goalkeeper. And as you can see, we have four goalkeepers at our disposal. And I'm looking at Adam Legsdins here, 32-year-old, contract expiring at the end of the season. I'm going to get rid of him, attempt to. We'll move him into the under-23s. He shouldn't be in the first team and Peacock Farrell be in the in the, in the the under-23s. That shouldn't be happening. You've we've got uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell here. And I think he will be a decent third option to use. 22. Couldn't do a job for us. So I think he... I, don't, I won't loan him out. He will be in and around the sort of first team squad. He, I won't de back, de demote him again. But he'll be there. And then from there, we have Nick Pope, who is more of your traditional goalkeeper. But he's 27 and can still improve. I'm going to whack him on defend because that's what he would prefer to be. I do like Nick Pope and he's... Definitely in contention in this England spot to be our goalkeeper for the, for the Euros. So I'm going to use Pope. And then back up to him, we have got the legendary name that is Joe Hart. I do feel for Joe Hart. He hasn't had the best couple of seasons, has he? He prefers the more supportive role. Six foot five, 32 years of age. His contract goes at the end of the season. Might have to look to bring in maybe a younger goalkeeper next season. But for this season, he shouldn't be, or he shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to use him, I think probably in the cup games rather than Farrell and maybe even use him in the Premier League if Pope doesn't have too good of a of a of a run so and you know he's got he's got so much experience in the Premier League as well Joe Hart so as a, as a second as a backup to Pope Joe Hart is good and I'm going to stick with them too in the goalkeeper position I'm not going to look to improve that so in terms of wing backs on the right we have got Matty Loughton, who is a player I don't mind, actually, in real life. Decent crosser of the ball, which is a, something, as I say, I like. 5'11", good physical attributes. 30 years, years of age, though. You know, he's getting at that age now where you've got to sort of think, what is he going to be like? His contract goes at the end of the season as well. He will definitely be, though, my number one right back to start the season. And then back up to him, we've got Phil Bardsley. 25 grand this man's on. I mean... Oh God! As a backup, he could be okay just for this season, but I can't. I want my wing backs to overlapping, try and get balls into the box with a crossing ability of ten. I'm not so sure for the future whether Phil Bardsley is the right man. Maybe for backup purposes, he could do a job for us this season. But if Matty Loughton gets injured, we are really in trouble if Phil Bardsley is our right back. So, might have to look at that, potentially bringing a right back. But, uh, Phil Bardsley has Premier League experience. I think he was at Stoke, wasn't he, before he moved to Burnley. So, there's definitely definitely room for him to uh, to be of use this season. He played 19 games last season. 
in the Premier League. So maybe I keep him for one season, then we look to replace him in the summer. We'll, we'll stick with that for now. On the left-hand side, we've got Charlie Taylor, who is probably the one I'd go with. However, he's out for four to seven weeks. So he'll be back before the start of the season. I do like Charlie Taylor again. Good crosser of the ball. Decent physical attributes. Preferred foot is left. That's not bad. Ability to grow. I do like him. But then back up to him, we have got Robbie Brady that we can use. But Eric Peters, another man from Stoke, funny enough, who does have plenty of experience here in the Premier League. Played many seasons in a row for Stoke when they were here. So... I can't tell him anyway because he's just joined. He can do the wing back on support role. And I'm probably happy enough to use him, I think, for this season. So, again, I'm happy to use him. These two uh, won't be my starting ones. I would probably prefer Charlie Taylor in there once he comes back from his injury. But left back should be all right again for this season. And then finally, the two centre-back positions. We have an abundance of players here. Five centre-backs that we have got at our disposal. Jimmy Dunn is a younger alternative at 21. Whether he has the ability to be played in the Premier League, I'm not so sure. Many teams want him for a loan. Many League 1 teams look in there, League 2. I think we reduce him to the under-23s and we look to loan him out because we have then four centre-backs to choose from who are actually quite decent. Tarkovsky is definitely going to be the main man, I think. And I think partnered with him, you've got to look at Ben Mee, I think, as a strong option in there. You've got Kevin Long, who is 28 as well, that I think for this season will be OK to use. Good aggression, good header of the ball, a really big defender that will be able to uh, bully attackers. And then you've got Ben Gibson in there, formerly, of course, of Middlesbrough Football Club, the team that I support, who I think has had a torrid time. A torrid time in uh, at Burnley at the moment, so I might look to maybe use him and see what we can do. But I think we go with this tactic, this this lineup, which, as you can see by the green arrow here, indicates they have a strong partnership. And I think, do you know what? Them two might be the ones to go with. But centre back again is another option at the club where I think it's okay for now. It would do us for this season. I'm not I'm not a manager that likes to come in at the start of a save and just bring in five, six, seven players. I'd, I'd like to, to start just realistically with what the manager has in real life has started with. And this is what they started with. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to look to sell Vidra, loan out a few players. But apart from that, the squad will really stay the same. I am going to look to bring in a Mazala, I think. But other than that, let's try and kick on this season and stick with what we have. And then for next season, we try and progress bring in a couple of players and see exactly what we can do. Um, I think off camera though, I will look to maybe make another tactic, a substitute tactic for this one if it doesn't really work. Maybe just a bog standard 4-4-2, um, which will probably suit the players a little bit better. Although familiar, familiar, familiarity levels suggest that this isn't, isn't too bad. Um, so we'll look to see how this tactic goes. Um, one final thing, I know this episode is getting a bit long already, I do, I do apologise for that. It's just contract situation. Um, we do have a number of players leaving us at the end of the season. This club doesn't even really tend to use loans at all, so I suppose that is positive uh, for now. Um, Kevin Long and above from that, these are all the players whose contracts are expiring at the end of the season. And I'm sat here looking now, and I'm seeing Jeff Hendrick at 27. His contract goes at the end of the season. He's from Derby, isn't he? Yeah. I think we looked to maybe keep hold of him off camera. Uh, I might give him a contract. Just see how that's like. The rest of them, though, to be fair, they're all, you know, getting in that age now. And they're all, all got a decent bit of money. Like, I look there, £45,000 for Joe Hart. <sighs> Is he deserving of that big of a contract? That would really, this would really help reduce the wage budget and obviously keep us in that club vision target that we have, which is uh, work within this budget, which will be difficult, but I think we should be able to do it relatively easily. Um, so I think it's definitely uh, definitely worth keeping, keeping that in mind for the rest of the season. However, I think that is going to be it for episode one. Sorry if I have 
rambled a little bit too much. Um, I'll play these friendlies off camera and then we'll come back for the start of the season. The first two games, which will be Arsenal and Sheffield United. A very difficult start there against Arsenal. Maybe Sheffield United might be a little bit easier for us against a team that have just been promoted. However, in real life, they are defying the odds. Indeed, they are. So, what I'll do off camera is I'll do the window um, and then we'll come back for the first game of the episode and we'll talk through the business that we've done. After that, though, once we've done the Sheffield United game, we transition to episode three. I will play a number of games off camera and then we'll come back for two games. So that's what you should really expect with the format. It's just to progress the save on nicely and ensure that we can get through seasons with relative ease. Um, and obviously, you know, I'll come back at any uh, points that I, I plan to come back at. So obviously, I'll come back for the Arsenal Sheffield United game and then we will go from there basically and see exactly what we can do with this squad but anyway thank you very much for watching as i say if you've enjoyed please hit the like button comment any suggestions regarding me myself anything that you want to really know and even some transfer suggestions as well if you have any in mind but i thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you for episode two very soon take care guys